So today we're starting Unit 5, Graphical Applications of the Derivative, and we're looking at 5.1 Higher Order Derivatives, which are on pages 217 to 222 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to extend understanding of curve sketching by applying differentiation and limits. And our lesson objectives today is to be able to find a higher order derivative of a function, and to be able to find the second derivative when using implicit differentiation. So there are occasions that you're going to need to take the derivative of a derivative. And this is called the second derivative, and it's important to know. And it can be denoted in the following ways. We can call it y instead of prime, we'll be calling it y double prime, f double prime x, or d squared y over dx squared. These all mean the second derivative. So we're going to find the second derivative of uh, x squared over 2x minus 3. So first I'm going to use the quotient rule. Uh, so the quotient rule says I take the derivative of the top, multiplied by the bottom, minus the top multiplied by the derivative of the bottom, which is just 2. And then I take the bottom and I squared. So that's just using the quotient rule. So I'm going to combine, um, expand the top and combine like terms. So I get 4x squared minus 6x minus 2x squared all over 2x minus 3 squared. And in the end I get 2x squared minus 6x all over 2x minus 3 squared. So that's the first derivative. In order to take the second derivative, I need to take the derivative of the first derivative. So to take the second derivative of this thing, we're going to use the quotient rule again. And so we take the derivative of the top, which is 4x minus 6. We multiply it by the bottom, which is 2x minus 3 squared. And then we leave the top, 2x squared minus 6x, and we take the derivative of the bottom, and so the derivative of the bottom, we need to use a chain rule. So that's 2 times 2x minus 3. We re subtract 1 from the exponent, so it's just a plain old 2x minus 3. And then we also multiply by the derivative of what's inside of the brackets, and that is 2. And that is all now over 2x minus 3 to the fourth power, because we square the bottom. So now I can take out a greatest common factor here. I've got 2x minus 3s and a 2x minus 3 here, so I'm going to take out one of those 2x minus 3s. And then I can also take out a 2 from here, and I can take a 2 out of the 4x minus 6. When I'm done with that, if I take a 2 out of the 4x minus 6, I get 2x minus 3. And I still have one 2x minus 3 left. Over here, I've taken out the 2x minus 3, I've taken out a 2. So I'm just left with a 2 and a 2x squared minus 6x. And that's still all over 2x minus 3 to the power of 4. Now, I can cancel out this 2x minus 3 with one of those, and I can expand in the inside the brackets and combine like terms when I'm done. And when I do that, I get a 2 on the outside still. 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3 is 4x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 9. And here I have negative 4x squared minus, or plus, sorry, 12x. And that's all over now 2x minus 3 to the power of 3 because I've removed one of those uh, 2x minus 3 so from the bottom. Now when I combine like terms, I have 4x squared minus 4x squared. Well, that cancels each other out. I have negative 6x and negative 6x, which is negative 12x. That cancels out with a positive 12x. So in the end, I just get 9 left inside the brackets. 9 multiplied by 2. And that's all 2x minus 3 cubed. And so my final answer is 18 over 2x minus 3 cubed. So taking the second derivative takes a little bit of time, takes a lot of space, depending on what rules you're going to use. Um, but you can take the second derivative. It, you can use uh, the quotient rule in this case, or you could probably get the same answer by using the um, chain rule and the product rule. If you change this to 2x minus 3 to the power of negative 1 and move it up, um, depending on whether you like the product rule and the chain rule or the quotient rule. And finally, it says use implicit differentiation to find the second derivative of x squared plus y squared equals 16. So if I'm going to use implicit differentiation, it's because I have x's and y's in the same equation. So to take the first derivative of that thing would just be 2x plus 2y. Now you have to remember to put in the dy over dx whenever you take the derivative of a, something with a y. And just 0 because the derivative of any constant is 0. Now remember that we would solve for dy over d dx, so we get 2y over dy over dx equals negative 2x. I divide both things by negative 2y, 
and I get negative 2x over 2y, and I get dy over dx equaling negative x over y. Now, I need to take the second derivative. That means I need to take the derivative of this thing. Now, um, the derivative of negative x over y is probably easily, easiest done with the quotient rule. So if I'm going to take the second derivative, which is d squared y over dy, dx squared, that means I take the derivative of the top, which is just negative 1, and I leave the bottom, which is y. And then I subtract from that the top, which is negative x, multiplied by the derivative of the bottom. Well, the derivative of the bottom is 1, but it's a y, so it's 1 times dy over dx. And then that's all over the bottom squared, which is just y squared. So now I get negative y plus x, but I have this dy over dx, and that's all over y squared. Now the good thing is that we know what dy over dx is, because we just found that. It's negative x divided by y, so we can make a substitution. So we get negative y plus x multiplied by negative x over y, all over y squared. And now it's just an algebraic manipulation because we can't have fractions divided by fractions. So this is going to be x times negative x. That's negative x squared. This is just a y in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply this thing by this negative y by y over y. Because then I can get a y in the denominator. I'm running out of space here. Um, but I get negative y squared minus x squared all divided by y, and that's all divided by y squared. Remember that dividing by something is like multiplying by its reciprocal. So I get negative y squared minus x squared divided by y. I'm going to multiply by 1 over y uh, squared, which leaves me with negative y squared minus x squared all divided by y cubed. And here we go. So this is our final answer for our second derivative um, when we're using implicit differentiation. The key thing here is that you can usually make a substitution um, for dy over dx because you would know exactly what dy over dx is because you just found that out in the first part. So in summary, you need to be able to take the derivative of the derivative, which we call the second derivative. Obviously, we need to know all of our differentiation rules to be able to do this. So the product rule, the chain rule, the quotient rule. And you also need to be able to use implicit differentiation to find the second derivative. So your assignment is on pages, uh, just page 220. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.